zoological website Fauna of Belarus and Minsk Foreign Languages Center Mir Bez Granits World Without Borders present Life of Dead Wood Remains of felt or dead trees are one of the most important elements in the forest. Decaying wood is the habitat of different plants, fungi and animals. Figuratively speaking, the dead wood is even more alive than at times when it was a growing tree. To understand this, it's enough to come into the woods and carefully examine the fallen tree or a stump. It seems like there is no life in a stump that was a tree once. But do not pass by, pay attention to the stump. The very first thing you may notice here is mosses, which settle on the stump, often covering it with a thick green carpet. You can meet green mosses and mushroom your feet on decaying wood in the forest. Initially, only certain types settle on the dead wood tied to the substrate. They contribute to the rapid decomposition of the wood. As the wood moldering away and the rotten layer is accumulating on a stump or a fallen tree, there are appearing other forms, conditions for which were scarcely favorable, primarily because of lack of moisture. Currently, scientists are aware of dozens of species of mosses settling on dead wood. When time will pass and those mosses will be forced out by ferns and flowering plants, the development of the mosses will be possible when the thickness of decayed wood reaches several centimeters. Probably, it is surprising that there is a vegetation of exalis and sometimes raspberries on an old rotten tree stump. But it is even more surprising when one can see a small fir tree, mountain ash or birch on the stump. But if it had grown, then it had found suitable conditions. It is an old tree stump that created these conditions. So it was useful. Deadwood plays a huge role in the life of fungi. One third of the fungi in one way or another is connected with deadwood. Not all of them grow on stumps, but a lot of things depend on it. Fungi which settled on the bark of a stump that recently appeared in the woods can penetrate into the deep layers of the wood reaching its nucleus. These fungi use the nutrients of the recently dead trees. Soon, other species, which number is currently more than 100 only on stumps of trees in Belovezhskaya Pusha, come to replace it. Fungi are actively destroying the dead wood. They accelerate the return of the chemical elements that make up the wood to our ecosystem and create conditions for many invertebrates to live in a stump. Fungi and moss uh, on the forest stumps and tree trunks is a part of the secret life of dead wood. Forest tree stump serves as a home to many animals and even birds. Lizards and snakes are very fond of stumps at forest clearings. They bask here in the summer under warm rays of the sun. Lizards get their food here. Spiders, ants and other insects make up their food allowance. At warm spring days it is quite possible to meet a viper or grass snake on a stump. But be careful because after wintering, vipers uh, can be pretty cruel. Do not disturb them. Don't worry, it's a grass snake, and it's not dangerous at all. It is not always easy to distinguish a viper from a grass snake. If you can see two yellow spots behind its head, 
then this is definitely a grass snake. But if it is a viper in front of you, just pass it around. Do not touch it, because it also has its place in the nature. Stumps serve not only just as a place to rest. They can be located in its burrows among the roots. Dead stumps are used for wintering. Moor frogs and even newts also use stumps for wintering. Woodpeckers take out insect larvae at stumps from under the bark and wood, and some birds arrange nests here. An old tree stump can also serve as a home to rodents, a place to store feedstocks for the winter for squirrels and jays. A stump is a paradise for many invertebrates. They can be found at every stage of wood decay in a forest stump. Some invertebrates live on the bark, the other live under the bark, in rotten wood or fungi, which are growing on a stump. Among the invertebrates, there are those who feed on fungi, dying wood, other invertebrates and their larvae, and even humus, which accumulate as a result of the destruction of almost the whole stump. Tiny insects, springtails, can often be found on the moss, lichens, or on the surface of a stump. Its role is very important. Depending on the species, they feed on algae, lichens, soft part of the shoot of higher plants, and some of them live on the dead bodies of various animals. The importance of these insects is huge. They are important soil farmers. Take a close look at the stump in the forest. Quite often you can find an ant hill. Carpenter ants, redwood ants and some other species of ants settle in the dead wood of tree trunks and stumps. It is hard to overestimate the importance of ants. In the forest, where there is a sufficient number of ants, there are no outbreaks of plant pests. The destruction of the stump is accelerated by ants' activities. In rotten wood, as in the ground, ants build their tunnels, make void of for growing larvae. All ants, except the queen, are divided into the following castes. Some ants look after larvae, the other look after the queen, the third find the food, the fourth guard the ant hill, and the fifth scout new territory and they all work very cohesively as a single organism. Wasps also can be called forest purges. They hunt for caterpillars, flies, softfly larvae and many other invertebrates. Their nests are in crowns of the trees or under the ground in roots of living or dead trees. Paper honeycomb, which are made of compressed wood fibers, are located in the nests. There are representatives of more than 30 families of beetles, about 15 families of diptera, hymenoptera and larvae and lepidopteran insects in stumps and trunks of dead trees. For example, in the badly damaged stumps larvae of click beetles can be found. It feeds on decaying wood. This is a long horn beetle. While the adults feed on flowers, leaves and bark, their larvae are widely distributed under the bark and in the depths of the wood. Here they make their tunnels. Long horn beetle larvae damage a living tree, which can lead to the death of the tree but they help the dead wood to turn into dust quicker. Also, bark beetles and their larvae can be found here under the bark. Many species of duckling beetles can be found in fungi and under the bark of wood. Large accumulations of Odemeridae can be found in heavily decayed wet wood. Among predators, Hysteridae stands out here. 
which larvae destroy the larvae of Scolitinae, Claridae, hunting for larvae of Anobidae, as well as some species of Carabidae and Staphylinidae. This is a carrion beetle, but not all of these beetles are scavengers. This species preys on the larvae of insects, worms, snails and slugs. Yes, gastropods also live here. During the daytime, the slug hides in the fractures and cavities of wood, and in the evening creeps out to eat fruit bodies of pileate fungi that grow on the stump. And this snail is interesting because it feeds on microflora and develops on dead wood. Look, there is a strange lump is crawling in the moss. This is a lacewing larva. A garbage lump on top of it is a protection from larger predators. Adult insects fly among the grass or in the trees, and they feed on pollen of flowers. But the larvae are less harmless creatures, they are predators. They attack on aphids and other small pests. It surely is useful. From time to time, parasitoid wasps appear on a dead or still alive but damaged by insects' wood. This female insect is searching the depths of the wood for horntails larvae. It pierces wood with its long ovipositor, gets to the larvae and lays an egg in her. Future parasitic wasp larva will feed on larvae of the pest. These are very useful insects. They constrain the mass infection and damage of the living wood. A female crane fly flew to the rotten tree. Here, in the crust folds, it will lay eggs. Under the bark of rotting in the dust of the black, will live larvae of the Diptera family, Scatopsidae and Strachyomidae. In humid, softened wood, will live larvae of Hoverfly and Eulididae. Apart from these, you can meet predatory larvae of Azilidae and Cerevidae. And also you can meet fungus gnats and Pletyposidae, which feed on mushrooms. Between the stumps and in the axles of the dead wood, spiders often build webs. It catches flying insects. But quite a number of spiders lead a nomadic way of life. Unlike their congeners, they run faster and jump higher. They prey on small invertebrates. Protective coloration helps these spiders very often. On the one side, they are invisible to the prey. On the other side, there is a small chance for them to be caught by a larger predator. Harvest men are found on stumps along with spiders. Probably, many of us saw a leg of harvest men which was lost while escaping from a predator, beginning to twitch. It attracts the predator, distracting it. And at this very moment, Harvestman escapes. It was eight legs, seven remained. It's okay, because he survived. Look, crane fly came here. They inhabit damp places. There are two passengers under the mosquito's abdomen, like on a plane. It's pseudoscopians. Do not worry, they are not poisonous at all. And on our territory, there are so small that hardly noticeable. They feed on small insects. When the conditions of their inhabitation deteriorate, they are moving into the open place and cling to large flying insects, which set to rest and pseudoscopions use them as a means of transportation. 
Among other invertebrates, predatory lithobiomorpha and geophilomorpha can be found under the bark of the stump and its wood. They belong to the centipedes. Usually they hunt at small insects and spiders that hide in cracks of bark or in holes in the ground at dusk. Here you can meet their harmless relatives, which are Julida and Polydesmida. They belong to millipedes and feed on decaying leaves and other decaying remains. Creatures which are very similar to millipedes and centipedes live in damp stumps. They're wood lice. In fact, there are the only crustacea that adapted to life on land. Paradoxically, most species of wood lice do not breathe by atmospheric oxygen, but by the oxygen that was dissolved in water. For this purpose, their front abdominal legs have gills, which have to be covered with moisture permanently. As millipedes, wood lice feed on decaying vegetation as well as parts of living plants. In the last stages of the destruction of wood, when the majority of grain is ground to dust by larvae of beetles and other insects, and cellulose casings of wood cells are half destroyed by bacteria and fungi, worms intervene. These are nematodes and round worms. Well, earthworms are known to every fisherman. They belong to annelid worms, and they both feed on remains of wood and almost completely transform it into soil. As a result of joint activity of fungi, mosses and vascular plants, as well as many representatives of the various groups of wildlife, dead wood destroys rather quickly and forming its elements are returned to the cycle. And what if this did not happen? What would have happened? Think about it. Having found the answer, you will understand how important for an old stump or a fallen tree to have its place in the forest. Forest can't be a home for many animals and plants without it. And then the forest will become poor. That is why it is so important for people to learn to leave old desiccating trees and dying stumps out in the forest. Script by Leonid Chumakov Sound design Dmitry Belkevich Video operator Boris Vorobyov Read by Sergei Kunitz the adapted translation is sounded with the support of the School of Foreign Languages, The World Without Borders, Minsk, Republic of Belarus, 2017. Please provide feedback and share your thoughts below the video. Click the like button. Subscribe to the channel Phono of Belarus and you will be informed of new films about a